Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place Binding of Isaac Adler with plus 14 wins in a row. It's a freaking start, dude. This could be a tough one, maybe forgotten? That's not tough, but uh, you know, it's in the range of toughness next to uh, the keeper down there. Seller XL 73WG EE2G. Is that a G? That's a Q. <laughs> You know, the alphabet is, in many ways, one of the hardest uh, things to remember, I find. Look, there's a couple of letters in the English alphabet. If you could rework it, first off, you'd put U and I next to each other. Secondarily... I mean, you might work on the symbols a little bit. Q and G is a little bit, uh, I mean, those obviously are not close. But J and G? You don't need a J and a G in the alphabet. I guarantee that that was a situation where, like, you know, somebody's son, you know, Miriam or Webster's son was like, I want my name to be George, but with two J's. And then, you know, they were like, well, my baby wants, my baby gets. Guess what? 26th letter in the alphabet. By the way, when I say I guarantee, what I really mean is I have no idea. <laughs> And we should probably rely on uh, historical linguists in order to determine this information. But I'm telling you, if you removed the Z from the English language... Pardon me, sorry, I got... Please don't take this out of context, I got nut throat. I had a handful of mixed nuts in between the last video and this one. You could remove Z from the language, replace it with like a double S or something like that. Everything would be A-OK. -okay. People are serious about their mixed nuts, by the way. I didn't realize it. Um, here's the thing. I, uh, you know, I'm rework on my diet a little bit to be healthier. Especially now that I got the, I got the routine set and the habit set for working out. Now, the hardest part is setting the habit. Once you get to that point, it's just not letting bumps in the road send you off. You know? Once you get the habit, that's the, that's the hard part. Now it's keeping it. Should be relatively easy. Honestly, I think we're on our way down to the next floor. Tower. Um, so I've been buying, you know, healthy fats, basically. Mixed nuts. I should be buying just almonds. But here's the thing. Almonds are really expensive. And it's not that, you know, I don't have the means. It's more that, like, you know, I like the taste of almonds. Um, a lot, actually. However. Hold on here. I, uh... When it comes to, you know, I'm trying to think of the the weightage, but when it comes to buying, like, you know, 400 grams of nuts, I could either pay, like, literally $10 for mixed nuts, or I could pay, like, $22 for just almonds. I kind of like some of the other nuts in the mixed nuts container a little bit more than almonds. You know, obviously, cashews are kind of like the crown jewel. I'm not gonna get into it, but you know, peanuts are like one of the ooh, cheaper nuts, and I like them. I actually think peanuts, you know, for me, they taste better than almonds. Anyway, I don't want to get too far into it, but um, there's like many gradations. It's like buying, um, you know, a precious metal or something like that. And my grocery store, and not Whole Foods, not our boo bougie grocery store, but like our, you know, normal grocery store, um, there's like, all peanuts. That's like the cheapest level of mixed nut. Nothing wrong with that. Then, there's like mixed nuts, 60% peanuts. That's where I'm at. Which is like, hey, you know, you might be in that peanut weight class, but sometimes you want a little variety. But, you know, that's a, that's a cheaper variety of mixed nut, is the 60% peanuts camp. Um, we gotta be actually more careful than you would expect here. Then they get down into like, you know, 30% peanuts, and then like, mostly cashew. It's it's a whole, I didn't realize that there were so many skews of mixed nuts. But it's a, it's a whole thing. I mean, people get very serious about it. Anyone else used to, I, don't, I, I very, very rarely see this now, but uh, when I was younger, my grandparents used to keep like, nuts in the shell. I don't know why that sounds like a, a hip-hop song. <laughs> you, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to make it up in my head, but it's, it's not going well. 
Right now, here's what I got, okay? I'll be honest with you. Here's how it goes. Nuts in the shell, na 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 na. Nuts in the shell, ooh ooh. And you can work on the rest from there. That's the hook. Um, but there used to be like a bowl. There'd be like walnuts in there. And I would crack them open. And they'd be all like old and mealy. You don't know how long the walnuts been in there. It's like a little bitter. It kind of tastes like soap. I'm glad we've moved past that era, to be honest with you. Angry Fly might be like one of the least consequential items in the game. I really think that its existence changes like basically nothing about our chances on this run. Great shop. Just be cool. Very simple. Like I just don't get like Angry Fly, what do you do? Just kind of fly around the enemy? Occasionally get up in his grill? It's not good enough. We demand better at this organization. Ah! Yes, I will take that and I'll try this on for size. Why not? If we get more money, I'll come back for sure. Anyway, that's, I mean, there's there's no, how, how many minutes do you think I was going to do on mixed nuts? Different people got different preferences. I gotta say, like, for a while I fought it, but I, I really think that when it comes down to brass tacks, I'm kind of a peanut man. It's a great, it's not the healthiest nut for you, but it's, it's not on the, you know, it's not junk food. Um, it's a very cheap nut, readily available. If you're feeling, you know, a little spicy, you can get some seasonings up on that. Cashews, of course, but cashews are quite expensive. And then walnuts, I mean, like, I, I can get down with a toasted walnut on a salad. Brazil nuts, sure. I, any nut that takes more than, uh, you know, two bites to eat, you know, you gotta approach that with a different kind of uh, spectrum of comparison. Where am I going with this? I'm just trying to fill the... I'm trying to fill airtime. <laughs> Much has been made of my uh, culinary preferences. I don't consider them bizarre. I'll tell you, you know, I've, I've been buying a lot of fruit for months, really. Um, and I I don't want to act like I'm the only person in the room. I don't even want that, honestly. I don't want to act like I'm the only person in the room who's got their head screwed on straight, but I've been buying pre-cut fruit and, uh, you know, like a, a fruit salad mix, basically. You know what my favorite fruit in the fruit salad mix is? Cantaloupe and honeydew. I don't know what happened. I don't know how melon hurt the rest of the world, but if you, it's it's like um, saying the word moist. If you pop into somebody's stream and go like, I'm eating some cantaloupe. People go, ooh, cantaloupe. I, I genuinely, I don't know. It, it must be like an upbringing sort of thing. Cause when I was a kid, my parents got like melon. They were like, not like it's a special event, like you know, like a Victorian child would get like a single orange for Christmas. They'd be like, "Where did this come from? We brought it from the New World." It wasn't like that, but it was like you know, we didn't get it all that often, just because it, it's kind of an inconvenient fruit. My favorite Al Gore movie. What have I done? Um. So, I have, like, positive associations, but people sometimes, like, even watermelon, which growing up, I don't know, again, if it's, like, an Ontario thing, but watermelon was, like, is nature's candy. Now, I bring up watermelon, people are like, it's just, like, crunchy water. I don't know, are you, are, are these out-of-season watermelons or something like that? Watermelon is, like, one of the most naturally sweet fruits on the planet. I, I can even, I'll, I'll get it down to brass tacks. Inside of the pre-cut fruit mix, what do you get? Uh, purple grapes, orange, cantaloupe, let me out please, honeydew, pineapple. And I'm telling you, for me, it's honeydew, then cantaloupe, then pineapple, then grapes, then orange. I love oranges as fruits, don't get me wrong. Not a great choice there. Um, but, uh... It's, it's the weakest part of the fruit salad for me. Also, like a cut orange tends to... Man, I lost the eternal heart there, too. Cut orange tends to get a little 
sourer after a while. Still, like, very nice, but... I'm just, I'm, I'm always here to defend the undefendable, you know? I consider myself like a pro bono defense attorney, public defender. If you've ever been on Twitch and mentioned your love of melons and been made to look like a culinary fool, I'm here to represent you, okay? You're getting a bad rap, in my opinion, unfairly from the denizens of Twitch.tv. There are some fruits, I feel, that are overrated. And I'll... <sighs> you know the expression, the juice ain't worth the squeeze? I feel like it applies a lot here. I like apples. A Fuji apple on a, on a hot summer's day, right out of the refrigerator. Wonderful. Honeycrisp, delicious. I'll even get down with a, with a red delicious. Now that's just crunchy water. But I can still, you know, I got nothing against the H2 double O. Wait, maybe I do have something against uh, H2O2. That might be, like, incredibly toxic. Um, but regardless. I, d I don't really buy apples anymore, because it's just like... I don't want to say it's too much work to eat them, because that's a ridiculous statement. But I'm kind of like, whenever I see the apples in the grocery store, I'm not excited. I don't go, oh boy, I get to eat some apples this week. And I figure as an adult, you know, I should be... I, I have control. I Obviously, it's not like... It sounds ridiculous. You might be like, well, of course, you know, it's not like a snack food necessarily. You shouldn't get excited about apples. It means you should still, you know, eat things that are good for you. Well, like when I buy, like, uh, you know, lettuce, I'm like, bro, I'm going to have some dope salads this week. I'm excited. Legitimately. Please give me some HP. I beg you. So with that, I get the apples, I'm like, ah, I'm just giving myself a chore, you know? I'm giving myself eight apples I gotta eat. So I've been tailoring my fruit intake slightly differently. Thanks for asking, by the way. I gotta focus on the run. I would I would rather talk your ear off all, all day and all night about my preferences for fruit-related goods, but... Whew. I can't. So check this out. We're gonna get a little funky here. Not a genius. But, kind of an okay decision. I'll tell you what, I'm just blowing this guy up. I'm afraid. So we have gotten, uh, the Eye of Belial, it's the thrill of the fight. Eye of Belial is not that immediately, oh no, beneficial. But I do think it, it, it does some good for us, especially if we actually get the HP to be the spirit again. Um, which obviously, as of right now, we do not have. That would have been a better one to pop. I'm taking all the pills. I want to know, dude. Okay, so, I mean, it's still, it's a bit of a touchy run, honestly. Ooh, it looks a lot better than it is, I think. Which is always a little dicey, a little dangerous. Um, we could how to jump ourselves into Bookworm. We might not even Feels need like to. I'm walking on sunshine. I'm glad we did. So just make, here's how you do it. Hyunk. Get how to jump back. Leave. We've been doing this a lot lately. We're gonna lose a full heart from doing this. Yeah. I mean, as long as we can replenish it, I don't care. I'd still rather keep Guppy's head. Um, and again, we're not really immediately in our physical form here getting too much value out of uh, out of what we just picked up, but if we get to become the spirit again, you know, we're kind of building two runs simultaneously here. And one of the runs is a, a melee focused run, which is normally my preference. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't know what I got hit by. 
Don't lose this bone heart. Don't lose this bone heart. What the heck, dude? It's all coming down. Yo, 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 give me Pyromaniac. I, they're both close, honestly, but... Things are spooky now. That I'm excited pill is really... I mean, it's, it's throwing us for a friggin' loop. So... There is... It, it's... <laughs> perhaps now we've reached the point where it's actually better than it looks, believe it or not. Um, and I say that not to be needlessly contrarian, but because with bone hearts, you always have to get hit at least twice to die. So the fact that we have 20 bombs and pyromaniac actually means it's real tough for us to just be killed. Now I would tell you, I'll be the first to tell you, we have not played this run in, a, in an appropriate fashion. We've definitely found ourselves uh, beleaguered as a result of uh, mistakes that I've made. No question. However, I think that as of the present moment, it's very tough for us to die. I also want to say that I think we've done a good job. You know, you have to remember and recognize this is a, uh, a floor where we traded a lot away in order to get uh, in order to get this Eye of Belial. We kind of leveraged our present in order to get future prospects, you know? It's like an NHL team in a rebuild. Yeah, temporarily we traded away our leading scorer for a first round draft pick from a contender, but you know, you never know what that first round draft pick could be and you know, the hope is we're pretty much guaranteed to get back anyway, you know? As a result of that draft pick, we can... It's some metaphor, sweetheart. Look it up. Is that what you're waiting for? So it's tough. Um, can choose to put our eternal heart on the line, which is what we're doing. Or, alternatively, to put our spirit heart on the line, which is also our life. In the end... We pretty much just don't want to be hit. That's the end of the, the story. We made it work. We'll take the halo for certain. We need some survivability. And we're leaving down to the next floor being in an okay position. Much better than we were, you know, mere moments ago. Alright, we can get back to talking about culinary delights. Father always told me what's right is right. Talk my ear off about culinary delights. Just saying, I know where my preferences lie, all right? I've stopped trying to make apples happen. I like them. You know, if somebody comes up to me and they say, hey, I got a nice juicy apple. I say, excuse me, what'd you say? And they mean, no, like, no literally, I've got a, you know, a gala apple here. You want it? Sure. It doesn't bother me. I mean, it's not like I dislike apples. I just don't like them enough to purchase them. And I, again, a lot of people disagree with this one. Oh, the letters I'm going to get as a result of this. But I kind of prefer a pear to an apple. And I'm not even talking about a pair of these. You know? There, it's, a, it's a variable fruit, and I'll be the first to tell you, you can get some real bad pears. You can get some pears that are as hard as a rock. It's a weird fruit. you got to catch it in exactly the sweet spot. It's kind of like an avocado. You know, one day too early, you're going to chip a tooth. One day too late, and it's it's just juice. But you get you catch it in the sweet spot. A, a good pear? Oh, it's delicious. You don't even have to take it out of context. Remember, I already did it for you. Um, and this run is, like, good now? What happened? I actually think it might be better as the spirit. But, it, you know, old habits die hard. Have they made Die Hard 8 yet? They should just call it Old Habits Die Hard. That one's on the house, Hollywood. Any second now. I feel the same way about a lot of fruits. I know you're like, is he still talking about fruit? Look, I'm spinning my wheels conversationally, okay? I'm trying. Um... You know, a fruit that's very variable that I actually don't really like that much is plums. And I've, I believe I mentioned it, but I found a, a website that ranked every fruit. And they had plums at the very top. 
And I very much disagreed with this. You know, I've had some good plums in my day, but this is, again, there's nothing worse than, uh, than a plum that's too hard for human consumption. Now, I'm not ashamed to admit, um, Capricorn, extremely nice here. I'm not ashamed to admit that, uh, my mom packed my lunch my entire scholastic career until university. Even in high school, my mom packed my lunch, and my parents bought all the groceries. So, I was unable to really wield the kind of influence that you would expect of an adult uh, over my, my culinary choices as a youngster. You know, I was beholden to whatever fruit my parents bought, which usually means I was beholden to whatever fruit was at the perfect intersection of being something they liked and also being on sale. So there's nothing like, uh, you know, opening your lunchbox Monday morning when it's snack time and you you go, okay, what did they have at the grocery store on sale this week? And you're like, oh my god, summer sausage. Summer sausage and a peeled orange. She loves me. But then sometimes it's like, you know, bologna and apricots. And you're like, ah. Just one of those days when you don't want to wake up. And then, like, a little bit of cheddar cheese that got sweaty in saran wrap. Totally changes the flavor. In a way that I gotta say, I don't disagree with. Or I don't find disagreeable. Straight up. I think we want to go spirit from this point onwards. We'll see we have a 100% chance of a deal with the devil. I really think, you know, Capricorn helped us out a ton, but we benefit a lot from the... Uh, the extra damage and piercing effect from uh, Eye of Belial. I think this is a spirit focused run and the, the faster I recognize that, the happier we're gonna be, you know? Uh, and I actually, believe it or not, I don't think any of these are mission critical. Lil Brim I love. Lil Brim is a, is a glorious item. I just don't think it's, it's something that has to be uh, seen to be believed. A little touchy. Like, now that I think about it, there are probably some fruits I have not consumed since I graduated high school as a result of the fact that, you know, I have now have bought my own groceries for, you know, a decade and a half now. Like, I don't think I've had an apricot since the year 2005 or 2006, just being straight up. I've consumed apricot as an ingredient in other things. Same with nectarines. You know, it's just the little, like, stone fruits don't appeal to me that much. Now, there's a couple that I'm remiss. You know, I haven't had peaches in a long time. I gotta tell you, there were some days in, in middle school where, you know, peach season's popping off. I could eat, like, four or five peaches and just be like, this is the life, man. I'm not even trying to do a weird Nicolas Cage, I could eat peach for hours thing. The soup's too hot. The soup! It's a little inside joke there. Um, please. Don't hurt me. No more. So I hope you're ready for the rest of this episode to be... This is the fruit episode right here. The one with the fruit from Friends. If all the friends fought, who do you think would win? I know the joke, why doesn't Ross, the largest of the friends, just eat all the other friends? I'm pretty sure that, you know, Joey was pretty jacked, dude. You ever wonder about that? Like, um, you know, so many of the who would win in a fight discussions, uh, I mean, obviously they favor the more physically imposing of the people involved. And I, I'm asking this as like a real question to people who have maybe been involved in like combat sports um, to what degree I mean like if you look at like the UFC usually the people who are stepping into the ring are just absolutely shredded right but sometimes there's like a like one dude who looks like a, an Abercrombie and Fitch model is in the ring against somebody who kind of looks like I don't want to say like they look bad but they you know they maybe look a little schlubby and then the dude who looks schlubby, I feel like there's myriad examples of him just actually being like a freaking grizzly bear in disguise and like nearly tearing his opponent limb from limb. 
And you're like, I never would have bet on the guy who didn't have visible abs in this situation, but he's like, he's just feeding them the right left, you know? To what degree does that actually matter? I mean, I think like if, if there's no combat, oh, I'm dumb. If there's no combat experience, it probably matters more, but you know, if you're at, I know there's probably a few amateur UFC fighters watching this. That It was like poker, you know, it popped off for a while. Everybody was having makeshift octagons in their basement. You ever had the crap kicked out of you by a guy who looks like me? <laughs> Please tell me it's possible. Um, I think we're content with where we're at here. It's been a bit of a weird run. It's had its ups and downs. Not really like a roller coaster. You know, they, I don't think the highs have been that high. And I don't, certainly the lows, I'm hoping, are not going to be... I mean, I guess a roller coaster doesn't really get that low, right? Like, it drops a lot, but... You know, it never, like... I mean, I guess it can go underground, but I feel like it doesn't happen all that often. Most of the time, you stay suspended above the... Above the platform. Above the ground level, I mean to suggest. Always nice to play as the Forgotten, though, to be reminded of the fact that uh, he's in the game and is a fun character. That if you play your cards wrong, could totally screw you, which is kind of what almost happened, but instead, mercifully, the game let us pull out. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> um, he's got the nut throat. I love the nut throat, baby! So, we're, it looks like we're going to stop just shy of actually becoming Guppy. To, truth be told, we probably should not have taken the item to begin with. But, we actually are in a pretty good spot on HP now. And who knows, maybe we could complete the trifecta. I feel like we've uh, come close but no cigar to this Guppy dream quite a lot recently. Yo, I just realized as well, we have seven luck upgrades. <laughs> Or we have seven luck, I should say. That's uh, that's surprising. I didn't uh, pay attention to that as it was happening, but uh, once we're down on the chest, that is uh, that's probably good for getting a few items. I would, I would imagine. So it looks like you know. The more I look at this, I also see that we have that curse room we could actually go to if we deem it appropriate. Um, I actually feel like we got a pretty good bead on coming out of this run. You know, A-OK. -okay. Very surprised I got hit there, to be honest. Life goes on. It's nice because, you know, if we have to... I definitely feel like I could uh, roll melee only on this run. I mean, that's my preference whenever we get the opportunity. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to leverage some of this HP. So I think that we're capable of making it happen. Probably should try not to lose the bone heart, though. Yeah, maybe don't walk into those guys. We got super lucky to not get tagged there. And yes, I said tagged because I my brain was primed to think about UFC and I thought about Joe Rogan. That's why I like ordering. Uh, people ask me, "Hey, Anel, what's your favorite Indian dish?" Happens all the time. Well, my favorite Indian dish is uh, probably like a masala dosa or something like that. You know. But I love to order Rogan Josh because every time I eat it, I can you know, I have to dab my brow because it's a little spicy. I get to go, oh, I just got tagged. Anyway, Rogan Josh, look it up. Let's go up to the cathedral. I don't really care about the curse room. I, you know, trading. Well, we probably wouldn't even trade HP. We should have cared about the, the curse room. We had red hearts sitting there, but it is what it is. Red Heart, thank you. You can tell I need to get lunch after this episode. Just based on the way the conversation is, has been flowing. The problem is, I've been having these, uh, let's call them makeshift lunches. So like... I'm in, I'm in that weird little yo-yo cycle, you know, people talk about like the, the nacho cycle. It's like, well, I got tortilla chips, I should get cheese. I got all this shredded cheese, I gotta get some tortilla chips. And you just kinda like yo-yo back and forth. Also happens with hot dogs and uh, hot dog buns, you know, etc, etc. 
What are you going to do with four hot dog buns if you ain't got any hot dogs? What are you going to do with four hot dogs if you ain't got any hot dog buns? I mean, there's ways that you can cut them up like little octopuses. Put them in your crab dinner or something. But you know what I mean, you know? It's not necessarily the preferred way to consume the food. Um, however, is it different? You know, I've been living a slightly healthier lifestyle. I don't want to act like it's a big deal or anything, but, you know, I'm working on it. Um, so I got, like, you know, these chicken breasts that I cooked up. And I got tortillas along with them. So I can have some, you know, basically chicken wraps, chicken fajitas. You get the idea with some fresh vegetables thrown in. Then I ran out of tortillas. I still got a bunch of chicken left. So for lunches, I've basically just been eating a bowl of chicken breast with, uh, like, a hot sauce on it. <laughs> and I'll, I'm not trying to act like, yo, it's, bro, it's called keto. Look it up. You know, I'm, I mean, I'll make the joke, but... It's not really what I'm all about here. It's more like, you know, I was talking about it with Chad, and they're like, well, why don't you just have the chicken on bread? If I had, they say it's the same problem as the tortillas, you know? They, they go bad before I can eat them. Or I eat them, and then I got to go get more. Why am I standing here still? I don't always have bread in the household, because if I had bread in the household, I would just eat it. I guess I'll just continue to stand here, because we have not been hit here yet. You wouldn't. I told you. I, I did not believe that they would. And we appear to be correct. Who knew? It's the easiest way to do that room. I'll tell you that much. No? I mean, yes, but not exciting. It, probably the least exciting series of chests we've had in a while. Now, may I point out that somehow, after having uh, seven luck, we're now at nine luck. And I guess we've just been picking up a lot of pennies. But, I mean, that's at the point where, at nine luck, I expect to get an item per room. Really. And, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm entitled to getting an item per room. I'm just saying, like, from a, an arithmetic standpoint... I think we're in item per room territory. Which means that this run could become even better. For all the... Well, okay. You know, for all the positives that we've got going on, this is really not like a, a 10 out of 10 run. It's certainly... I mean, it's not winnable. It's one, more or less. But it is a little bit... Yeah, it's not so smart. It is a little bit underpowered, you know, compared to where I might expect it to be at this point, but still making it work, and I mean, you know, 15 runs in a row is... 15 wins in a row, I should say, is definitely nothing to sneeze at. Very satisfying watching that health bar go down. I must break you. Ivan Drago. You know, Von Drago, he is a real bad rap in Rocky. Just because he mercilessly murdered Rocky's friend for no reason in a boxing match where he easily could have showed mercy um, and, you know, chemically uh, gives himself an unsanctioned advantage in the fight against Rocky, you know, and, and you know what? I've kind of talked myself into the idea that maybe he's not such a good guy now that I think about it. I actually thought maybe we could make this work here, but I think I'm just gonna... Oh, you know what? We actually have to switch back to melee just to live. And now things are getting a little a little spotty. We still got this weird Ludovico technique tier. I don't, I don't really know what to do with it. It's kind of just following me around. It doesn't, I mean, it's homing, but it's doing so, like, really badly. There, oh, it, it, it kind of got something going on there. Angry Fly's doing something. Little Gertie, the Gertie Jr., whatever, is doing something. We did it. 
a weird run. I'm very glad they didn't even offer us Void there. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. We're up to 15 wins in a row. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya. See ya.